All right, guys. Hey, Greg Underdahl here. Greg Underdahl here, Angling Uploaded. And we're going to be doing a recap video, Stage 5, Messina, New York, Bass Pro Tour on the St. Lawrence River, St. Lawrence Seaway. Um, amazing, amazing, amazing fishery. Uh, thank you for joining me. This is Angling Uploaded, and it's kind of early in the morning. I have to catch a plane. Um, yesterday was the championship round of the Bass, Port, uh, Bass Pro Tour. <laughs> Can't talk very well this morning. Uh, Bass Pro Tour on the St. Lawrence River, and so I'm just going to go through actually the knockout round. Typically, I've done like kind of a recap of the whole six days of filming the Bass Pro Tour, but I'm just going to do the last two days. So the knockout round, and then also um, the uh, you know the championship round. So I'm going to just focus on those last two days. So um, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you're this first time you've uh, been here, I do recap videos of the Bass Pro Tour. I call it the Bass Pro Tour experience. And here we go. So knockout round, which was two days ago. For me, I was paired up with Bobby Lane, and Bobby Lane is like one of my favorite anglers. He's got an incredibly positive attitude, which is so refreshing, especially nowadays. Um, and one of the first things, so if you've been uh, watching my videos, doing these uh, recap videos, um, you know that Bobby Lane, uh, he carries a jar of pickles in his boat. It's like a snack, so on the breaks, he'll eat pickles. And uh, he, I think it was the last, the tournament before, two tournaments before, two tournaments before, I think. Actually, on both the last tournament and the tournament before that, so it would have been stage four and stage three, uh, I was paired with him. And, uh, and we ate pickles during the break. So, big pickle fan. And uh, it was just, it was, it was cool. Like, I get there at the ramp and Bobby's offering, uh, offering me pickles. Uh, before I jump in the boat with him. So, um, Bobby, again, Bobby's the nicest guy. I get everything, get him all mic. The first thing that kind of happens when I get to the ramp. So, um, my day kind of starts with going down. Uh, in this particular shoot, we are set up in a, an old mall. A mall uh, with not a lot of activity going on, <laughs> to be honest. It's kind of creepy, but um, in this particular event, we were... Um, the, the camera room where all our camera gear is stored was in a kind of a closed down mall. So uh, we all met up there. It was about 15 minutes actually away from the ramp, actually more like 10 minutes away from the ramp. So all the camera guys meet up at the camera room, get all our camera gear, our cameras, our camera, our charge batteries. Um, we get everything packed into a bag, bring the camera, put it in a rental car and I drive to the ramp and that's where I met up with Bobby but anyway I, I know I'm kinda all over this place so I apologize I just woke up really um, but I gotta catch a plane and I gotta get this retail or er, retail video wow I gotta get this recap video done so Bobby um, so how it works is all the anglers meet up at the ramp they pick up their boat officials they pick up their camera guys and uh, that's, that's when I saw Bobby and he talked about the pickles. I'm all kind of disjointed here, but you get the point. Um, so I mic up the Bobby and I mic up the boat official and, uh, and basically we're ready to go. Uh, Bobby's heading off to his first spot and he's such a happy guy that he's waving at everybody. Uh, he's just like some random, you know, fisherman, uh, you know, on the bank or fishing in a boat as we're passing him, he's waving just recreational boaters. He's waving, um, and he's smiling and it's always, it's always fun to, to be in a boat with Bobby cause he's so positive. Um, all right. So I'm looking at my notes here. Um, I've said this before on, on numerous uh, occasions, um, but the Phoenix, so Bobby's a, a Phoenix boat pro, uh, the Phoenix hull is the best hull in bass fishing. It is the smoothest hull 
I've been in a ton of bass boats. Um, as a boat, as a uh, videographer, um, I'm paired up with a lot of different guys that are in a lot of different boats. And so I can really tell, uh, I can really get a feel for like what boats, you know, how they ride and all that stuff. And there's without a doubt, Phoenix boats are like the smoothest um, holes on the water. And again, on this trip to Bobby's first spot, it's, it's, I mean, it's amazing. Like I never really thought I, I'd hear about bass boat hulls being good in rough water. Well, there's no real good bass boat hull in rough water. That doesn't really exist. Bass boats are essentially modified speed boats. Uh, so, but the way the hull is designed on the, on the Phoenix bass boats, it smooths out chop better than any bass boat out there. Um, they call it a diamond V hull. It's this, it's this hull design. I've heard that it actually was the hull design of Stratus, uh, of the Stratus boats. Uh, Gary Klaus was the president of Stratus boats and then now he's the president of Phoenix boats. I guess they brought that hull design over. And um, to me, it's, it kind of makes, you know, Phoenix is the best boat out there in my opinion. You know, bass boat. So I thought I'd share that with you. Um, so Bobby, you know, Bobby, he, he was kind of struggling and he kind of falls away from the cut. So I'm actually, uh, I'm transferred to Josh Bertrand and, uh, Josh is a, Josh is a great dude. I've actually, um, I've had Josh on my podcast and he, I've been on his podcast twice. He is a super professional, um, just very nice, courteous, but when it comes to just smallmouth in particular, he's, he's a hammer. Um, so I was really excited to be paired up with, with, uh, to be moved to, to Josh. And I mean, I, I love Bobby, but, um, it just wasn't happening for him that day, unfortunately. So, uh, they moved me to Josh. Uh, when not long after I get to Josh, uh, we, we had a weather delay. Um, and one thing about major league fishing that I really, really appreciate is that they take weather seriously. They take lightning seriously. And if they see an approaching storm, they make sure that we have time to get off the water. They, they basically post or they, uh, shut down the tournament for a while and they allow us to, uh, they allow us to find uh, shelter. So that's what happened. I'm sorry I look so grizzled and nasty right now, but what else is new? Um, anyway, so yeah, so basically um, this, this uh, front's moving in and uh, we have to, you know, they shut down the tournament. We have to, we have to go find shelter. We find a little cove. Um, and we pull into an empty slip. It's kind of a like a trailer park kind of community situation. And there's a gazebo, this little gazebo, kind of on this point. Uh, and we, um, I was kind of thankful because I didn't. It, this community, this uh, uh, RV community, uh, trailer park, whatever you want to call it, it didn't look like there was a common area or like a general store or anything. So luckily, there was a gazebo that Josh and uh, the boat official and myself, we all got under and kind of rode the storm out. Luckily, it wasn't that bad. Weather delay was only 20 minutes. So um, one thing that, that's interesting, um, how we know when to get back into fishing is the boat official will get a text that says, hey, uh, we're gonna start fishing again at this time. Well, in this particular situation, um, we kind of got the text late and that's that's one of the things about cell phones and everything you know just because you get a text sent out doesn't mean it's always gonna you know come in on time so we only had we got the text that came in came a little late and we only had like I mean I don't know they said lines in at I think it was I'm trying to remember what time at 305 I think they said lines lines in was gonna be and we got that text at three and it came in late three o'clock so we had to run 
to the boat in the slip and and I'm not the most in shape guy unfortunately and I'm chasing that Josh is running right in front of me and I'm right behind him and I'm like I have got to I mean this just what Josh does for a living we have got to get in that boat we cannot be lagging me and the boat official cannot be lagging behind and fortunately we jumped to the boat got going and we got to his first spot on time before the official start of uh, restart of the tournament so I was thankful for that but honestly I was like it was stressful and I felt like my heart was gonna pop out of my chest so um, when that all happened during that time you know getting in the boat and then um, driving in the next spot so Josh is we're, we're going to the next spot but Josh has got an idle in a uh, no wake zone and he does that he, he idles exactly like he's supposed to idle um, under the, the the speed everything I mean and then he he gets on up on plane and we take off and we we get going we get to the first spot so he's there fishing tournament starts and he's there fishing probably about I don't know three minutes and here comes this big center console boat very nice big center console boat and this guy just starts yelling at Josh and I'm like what is going on here and this gentleman um, said that Josh and he's yelling he's I mean he's like wants to get in a fight with Josh and I'm I'm in the back like recording all this and I'm like I don't know I don't hmm, should I be recording this I don't I don't really know I, you know I just st stood in the back and I just kept recording I had no idea you know so this guy comes up in his big center console boat yelling uh you you came out of that cove uh too close to the point they're 100 yards from the point and you know when you're on plane blah 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 you're, and you 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 can mess up my boat doing that you know i don't make a lot of money and i don't know and i'm like thinking to myself it's like dude you don't make a lot of money what the hell kind of boat are you are you uh, driving around in you know this guy was like looking for a fight and i got to tell you First of all, I think he was full of crap um, because Josh was under, uh, Josh was like, he was at, at the speed, like no wake zone speed or below it. And then, I mean, I couldn't see anything wrong with what Josh did. Well, anyway, this guy is like giving Josh hell and Josh was cool, calm and collected, professional, courteous and he diffused the situation. Um, what really got me torqued was that this guy's wife was has her, her phone out and she's videoing it the whole time. And I'm just like, seriously, you know? And I told her, I said, ma'am, could you put the phone down? I put my camera down because I had, you know, I, I put my camera down and I stopped filming me because I'm like, what, this is ridiculous. This is not, you know. Uh, no one needs to see this. But no, she just kept on filming. She's going to get a hit. She's going to share it on her social media. Just <sighs> really ticked me off. So uh, Josh was very nice. The guy calmed down and everything worked out. He said, don't worry about it. And it's a, it was a master class that Josh was giving on how to defuse a situation. So hats off to Josh. He handled it way better than I would have, let me tell you. Um, all right, so let's get back here to, uh, to fishing. I'll just make sure I didn't forget anything here in my notes. Um, okay, so, um, so Josh is like right on the, on the line and it's always like super stressful. He's right on the cut line. He's got to be in the top eight, right? And he's running around. He's looking for bedding fish. And he's got his bathoscope, his flogger, which allows him to see into the water. He bends over. He puts this thing in the water. You can see where his bedding fish are easier. Um, 
but he's having a really hard time. He's not seeing the fish that he was hoping he'd see, so he can, you know, there's not they're not on beds or they're being hard to catch. He finally finds one that's like uh, eager to eat, and it, it he loses it three times. It was heartbreaking. But it shows you just how tenacious these bass are that they would, you know, you could hook them three times, you know, I mean, or, or hook them like he hooked it twice before and he was still able to hook up a third time. Unfortunately, he, he lost the fish and that that was hard to watch because um, it's just it takes the wind out of your sails. And uh, Josh just start, you know, started dropping down the down the pack. And so um, he was falling away from the cut line. So I was moved uh, to Andy Montgomery. And Andy's, a, Andy's a, a, one of my favorites. He's a really funny guy. Um, really funny guy. I love his sense of humor. He's got kind of a dry sense of humor. And he's just an all-around fun dude to, to be with. He's not, doesn't... He's not too doesn't get too wound up about things. Um, he's got a great disposition, and he's catching this area. He's catching fish like crazy. He's I mean, there's a bunch of fish around, and Andy was right on the cut, and he had moved up a crazy amount of places to get there, and so I was thinking like Andy's got him, man. He's I mean he's gonna get in this cut no problem. Um, because he was just consistently catching fish and the area that he was on I mean when I jumped in the boat with him there's fish all over the place um, but unfortunately and and Andy was using like I'm trying to remember what he was using he was using like a a Ned rig I think that, that's what he was using primarily if I'm not mistaken but unfortunately um, he just couldn't you know he couldn't catch fish quickly enough and I really was bummed out because he was right right there but um, uh, there's the guys above him were catching fish too so he actually just he got bumped out by like 11 ounces or something so he and he lent he ended up in ninth place with like it was only like the last five minutes um, and so he ended up in ninth place and 11th overall in the tournament so but you know he was pretty he was pretty happy with that finish though um you know on the drive back home so basically we trailered back to the ramp um we didn't actually drive back to the ramp uh he was able to uh he actually they're not too far from where we were he had his his uh trailer and we were able just to jump you know trailer the boat back to the ramp from there so but on the back on the ride back you know he talked about how you know, for him as a Southern guy, uh, he wasn't really expecting to do very well in this tournament, and so he was pretty happy with a ninth place finish overall. All right, so let's go to the championship round. Uh, I was with Skeet Reese, and we had the longest. I think this, this is the longest boat ride I've ever had uh, in MLF history for me. Uh, it was an hour and twenty minute boat ride south. So we start in Messina, which is like up river. Of the St. Lawrence and we go south which is like heading towards Thousand Islands all these islands everywhere I mean it's the most beautiful um, terrain scenery uh, you can see it's just gorgeous islands rocky granite and homes beautiful homes little cabins on these islands everywhere it's so picturesque picturesque um, so an hour and 20 minute boat ride we're going through bands of rain and stinging rain on my on my face but I gotta tell you I do this because I love the adventure of it I mean I love capturing bass fishing I love capturing drama the excitement of it um, and there was a lot you know in this tournament this tournament is very exhausting long days long boat rides like big waves and <laughs> it's just it's been it's been exhausting um, but I do this because I love nature. I love the elements. Uh, I love uh, adventure. Doing this job gives me all of those those uh, those things, and um, it's it's just it's 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 I just get a charge out of it. And as a fisherman, of course, that just is a whole nother layer uh, 
It adds a whole other layer to it. So we finally get to the spot and it's a huge, huge flat. And we are in an area that just looks like heaven for a smallmouth angler. Crystal clear water. The water's up here just unbelievably clear. And it's just beautiful everywhere. Um, it just looks like the Bahamas, but if you could catch smallmouth in the Bahamas. So he's fishing a huge, huge flat. And there's really fish scattered throughout this flat. It's just a question of finding the pods of fish that are scattered throughout these, uh, throughout this flat. And uh, Skeet was basically catching them on a jerk bait, a crank bait, and also a, a uh, drop shotted little general, a uh, little uh, like Senko style bait or you know soft stick bait, just kind of. Uh, wacky rigged but drop shot it and so that's what he was he, he was using those three uh, presentations so he was like Skeet was in the middle of the pack the most day, you know for most of the day uh, then really got on a jerkbait flurry he found a good pot of fish in one area of the flat and the thing about that flat which is good is like he didn't move at all he, he fished the whole day on that flat and that area you know, the fact that you don't have to move much and there's just a ton of fish and you could just all day just go and try to find pods. It was really a good, good spot. But Wheeler was on such a tear that, I mean, Wheeler is, you know, I mean, Lord have mercy, Jacob Wheeler. You know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on there. The guy is phenomenal at finding fish. But then once he finds them, I mean, I don't know if there's anybody better than exploiting, than, than exploiting fish, like once he finds them. Um, he's really astonishing, this guy. So anyway, my point in that is that Skeet Spot was really, really good. Um, and he didn't have to go very far, so he didn't have to waste time. So, um, but it's still, you know, he, he wasn't able to get to the first place position, but he, he actually finished in third, um, which was darn good. He, he moved up well. He was like in the middle of the pack for, for the longest time and a little bit below the middle of the pack. And so when he found that, that, that good pot of uh, smallmouth, that really catapulted him up. Um, it got him in that third place position. So, I mean, obviously he, you know, Skeet's a competitor. He wanted to win, but I think he was pretty happy with a third place finish. Um, it was his birthday. It was pretty cool uh, that I was able to convey to, to Skeet or to pass on birthday wishes uh, from the uh, production crew in Tulsa, Oklahoma where the live show is being done. They wanted me to pass along to him happy birthday. So I did. Skeet turned 52 yesterday. So happy birthday to Skeet. And, uh, and, and Jacob Wheeler, congratulations on another impressive win. Lord have mercy. You are a hammer, dude. Um, so we took a slow ride, just a, a leisurely ride back uh, to the ramp with, with, uh, with Skeet. Uh, Skeet's got a vacation coming up uh, to Europe, so I talked to him a little bit on the ride back about that. And He's going to Rome, he's going to Croatia, he's going to some really, really cool places. So um, I think he's going to enjoy that trip immensely uh, with his family. So that'll be cool. Um, so yeah, one of the things that I love most about this job is just those moments, you know, those conversations with the pros, uh, just candid conversations. Um, and then also just, I mean, this, this ride back, just seeing the scenery, He's amazing. There's just so much to see out here. It's so interesting. These big tanker freighters with contain, you know, shipping containers with your TVs, everything that we buy. This shipping that's going on around here is incredible. Um, but there's a, there's something interesting to see everywhere you go on the St. Lawrence Seaway. So I really value those experiences. It's what I do. It's why I do what I do. Um, the relationships with the pros. Uh, the beautiful places we get to go. Um, it's really, really why I do what I do. It's, it's, uh, and I was just thinking about that on the ride back, how fortunate I am. So very, very thankful for that. Um, it's definitely one of the best, best things about this gig. 
So thanks for watching, guys. That's going to be a wrap of Stage 5 Bass Pro Tour, Messina, New York. And we're off to Stage 6. Appreciate you watching. Remember, if you enjoy these videos, subscribe to Angling Uploaded. Thanks, guys.